All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy, and once again, I am joined by this little plonker who's just hit 3K subs. How are you going, Drews? Yeah, very well, thank you, Jesse. Yeah, happy, happy to hit 3K. A uh, bit of a milestone that I was aiming for at the start of the year, so it's good to hit it a month in advance of the year finishing. Lovely. Thanks. Now, you may remember we have done a video together very recently called 10 Terrible AFL Trades, which we nearly named 10 AFL Trade Stinkers. <laughs> but what we're going to do today is talk about 10 draft picks that were terrible in hindsight. Yeah, draft picks are always very underwhelming um, when they don't work out because it's you put so much hope in them. can be a superstar or well, they can stink. So um, we're going to talk about the stinky side of things. So it's going to run off the same sort of uh, format that we did the other day, Drews, with the 10 terrible AFL trades. We're going to go one by one and pick 10 of the stinkiest draft picks, aka 10 of the worst draft picks we've ever seen. I will add a little bit of a qualification to this as well. I'm not really looking for players who maybe had their career ruined by injury. I'm not really wanting to heap shit on you know draft picks that were ruined by that. Yep. But more so looking at players that were taken and you think, gee... Like, he was a spud, and the players after him were actually quite good. Yeah, Anthony Morabito, you saved. All right, the first one I have got is a young man called Blaine Bokehurst, and this is probably one of the stinkiest draft picks I've ever seen in the history of my time of watching draft, which is only like, oh, maybe 12 years? Blaine Bokehurst, he was picked 19 in 2014, uh, and for me, the, as I said, one of the all-time howlers because he was a mature-age Swan Districts player, and he was actually quite good. There was talk of him going in, like, around 50 or 60 in that oh, draft, okay. right? And so Carlton had pick 19 and apparently they got spooked that Collingwood were interested in him at pick 30 so they leapt on Bocos with pick 19 and he played 25 games for the club and that was during a real shit period for Carlton as well yeah. they were literally one of the worst teams in the comp couldn't crack a consistent game and to add insult to injury I believe Bocos was a Pies uh, sorry a Blues fan and Prior to getting drafted, they found on his Twitter that he like roasted Malthouse and said he should get sacked right before getting drafted. No, so, or a that's few years. stinky, Mr. Boker. Stinky <laughs> pick. This one, fond in the memory of me as a St Kilda hater. It's Paddy McCartan. No, I don't hate the Saints. I'm joking. No, I okay, love the Saints. No, come on, come on. <laughs> First pick in the 2014 draft, which was a stacked draft. If I do remember it correctly, is that uh, the good one? It's fairly really like, strong. There's yeah. a few strong ones. Is that it's... not the heaps stacked on when Lewis Taylor won the? That draft? was 13. Oh, that was 13. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. So the first pick, you expect to be a franchise player, play 200 plus games and take your club to a flag? You played 35, Jesse. Mm. Not nice. Yeah, that's a stinky, unfortunately. There were a few concussion injuries uh, that I'm aware of with mm. McCartan, of course, but we did include him because on top of that, he never really sort of hit his straps, did he? Like, I think there's a chance he's going to get redrafted this year, but he never really found the form that you'd want with a pick one. Yeah, and especially when Petrarca did. He go too, yeah. Petrarca. Yeah, and look at him now. He's an absolute bull. He's probably my favorite player in the AFL to watch. Bit stinky. But, you know, I'm rooting for him to come back and make a good return. Yeah. Oh, um, Petrarca was All-Australian this year and could be one of the future, like, best players of the comp. So, yeah. real stinker, that one. At number three, we've got another all-time stinker, um, <laughs> Richard Tambor. a bunch of stinkers. <laughs> You get a stink account in the top corner. <laughs> so after 108 games at Richmond, um, playing a pretty low standard, Tampling was eventually traded to the Crows. Um, no, so the, the the one that's famous about this is Tampling was such a famous spud. He played like he played 108 games at a terrible club at Richmond, but like he was languishing there for the whole time yeah. and. The famous part about this is that he was taken after Delidio, Roughhead, and Griffin. That was the top three. And pick four was Tambling. And guess who was pick five? Or it was five or six. I think it might be five. Buddy Matt Tabiner. By Buddy Franklin. <laughs> So, apparently Richmond were choosing between Buddy Franklin and Richard Dambling, and they famously went for Tambling, and Hawthorne took the punt on Buddy Franklin, a X-Factor player with a lot of potential, but perhaps, you know, a bit of a risky pick, and boom, one of the goats. Wow, that is very stinky. That's like shit yourself stinky. <laughs> yeah. That's bad. That's Daniel Busher on a Saturday night. Passing up on Buddy. And, I mean, I suppose they got Revolt not long after, but Buddy hit the ground running. Mm. What season was it when he kicked, like, 100? Was that his 2008. second? 2008. Was that his second season? Nah, it would have been his third or fourth. Third, yeah. yeah, there you go. But that is terrible. Mm. Unlucky. Yeah, that sucks. One of Hawthorne's last big draft picks was in 2006. They had the sixth pick. They took Mitch Thorpe with the sixth pick. Now, the stinky thing about this pick was he was in between... Travis Broke and Joel Selwood, both club captains, played over 200 games, both of them. Um, and yeah, that's a stinky sandwich. That's yeah. some like off poloni and cheese that's been <laughs> left out. But two nice bits of sourdough on each side, but there's just a big stinky clump of poloni. Yeah. And it's Mitch Thorpe. <laughs> Come to True Footy for the best AFL analysis. <laughs> and yeah, Jack Revol and James Frawley in the same draft. How many games did this geezer play? I think he played two. Literally played two for Hawthorne. 
And then you had, yeah, later in that draft, in the early teens, I think Frawley and Rewalt followed. So there were good key position players on offer and they've gone for Mitch Thorpe. I don't think Hawthorne would have been too gutted winning the flag two years later. But, you know, Good could point. have strengthened that midfield. They didn't take an uh, early draft pick again until, was it Will Day? And then this year they're going to have pick four. Those are, like Since then, they've had no draft confidence. They're probably hating it, eh? And I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, I've got a draft stinker in the form of a non-bid for a father-son. I'm going to go Josh Dunkley in 2016. This Ooh. is something that people probably forget. He was actually a father-son for Sydney. His father, Andrew, um, played nice a... Nice name. Nice name. It played a lot of games uh, for the Sydney Swans. And it was the first year of the bidding system because the father-son system used to be different. And uh, they took Callum Mills, I think, at pick three to end up being. And they could have matched Dunkley at pick 25. I don't think it was a points issue. I think they just decided they didn't need Josh Dunkley. Uh, and, of course, he goes to the, the Bulldogs at pick 25, wins a flag in his first season. Uh, he's a young player. He's, he's a young star of the comp. And he might not be an A grader yet, but I think he probably will be. And he's still in the right age demographic to for to be a good player for Sydney if he was still there. So a bit of a howler there for Sydney. Yeah, he's one of the players with the most potential in the comp at the moment. Mm. Um, and yeah, Sydney could really use a elite midfielder at the moment. Oh, Jonathan O'Rourke. <laughs> what the fuck? Meow, meow, motherfucker. The cats are next. Imagine being picked two and being a stinker. This was, this was the case for Jonathan O'Rourke. He went to GWS. How many games did he play? Nine at GWS. <laughs> he got traded to Hawthorne or was it a free agent I don't know he went to play Hawthorne played 12 games there so second pick what's 12 plus 9 21 and yeah 10.5 games per pick if you do the maths uh, <laughs> now that's a good stat but nah that's stinky Ollie Wines and McRae were all in that draft as well and yeah. Big O'Rourke went number 2 yep speaking so of number like, 2 hey, that's a real stinker nice all right, next draft stinker is maybe a little controversial. I've gone with Ty Vickery, pick eight in 2008. Now, he did fork out 125 games, but similar to Tambling, there were 125 games of pure <laughs> stink. At, he played six games at Hawthorne because he got a traded as a, or he went as a free agent to Hawthorne. People were like, oh, Hawthorne will turn him into a non-spud, but he only played six games there, um, and even they couldn't fix him. And I think the pretty much the thing that T Vickery will be remembered for is his absolutely belting Dean Cox in a game <laughs> yeah. at Subiaco. Do you remember that? Yeah. So he's an absolute pick of a man but this also stands out because 2008 was a strong draft so Daniel Rich went the pick before but then following that you had Zeeble, Phil Davis and Steel Sidebottom the next three picks and Stephen Hill uh, no, nah, Stephen Hill was earlier than Ty Vickery, Ow. but you're, you're in the you're in the right uh, season. But um, no, nah, Zebul Davis in the bottom of, side bottom in the next three picks. Yeah. So Richmond have just plucked an absolute fart out of nowhere. Yeah, was he drafted as a Rockman? Yeah, yeah, Rockman's always hit or miss. So mm. yeah, probably couldn't tell whether it was going to stink or not. But mm. I don't know. I thought Ty Vickery was a serviceable player, but it's probably just because he was tall. Nah, yeah, I didn't. I don't see it. Yeah, fair enough. So as a fourth pick, you're expected, you're going into your side, you may be breaking in early in your first season. Imagine not playing a game. This was the case with Jared Pickett from South Frio, and he had the Benel factor, they thought. That's probably when they should have said, all right, let's not take him, because he's probably going to be on coke vendors every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that. <laughs> but no, he's one of those players that had a lot of talent, but just they couldn't get it out of him. They couldn't extract it out of him. Mm. Went to Carlton, and his career just fizzled out, and yeah, just a wasted talent going on the fourth pick. Yeah, and who was the next pick? <laughs> you know who the next pick was? Who? Jordan the Goey. Oh wow, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most electrifying players in the AFL at the moment. And uh, yeah, could have been at GWS. Although they probably would have traded him to a Victorian club at some point anyway. Yeah, GWS point. suck. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's not what you want for a fourth pick. Next up, I am going to nominate Jack Scrimshaw from the 2016 draft. Now, it is still early days. Jack is still on the list. But he was pick seven uh, in that 2016 draft. And he was actually taken with the pick that was traded for Dion Prestia. So it was mm. an important pick for them to nail. He's a skillful running back with elite skills. Sort of build as like a kind of like a new sort of better suckling. Maybe a bit taller, but a really damaging sort of running defender x-factor player but he only played four games for the club and requested a trade home to hawthorne uh he, again he could still make it but hasn't put it together yet so if you look at the players taken around that pick the next uh three i think non-gold coast pickups were griffin <laughs> non-gold coast pickups because they had like picks as well like they took will brody after that as well so uh, i didn't i didn't include him yeah, but okay. griffin Logue, ollie florin and jai simpkin were the next three live picks yeah, so got ya. um you know bit of a stinker in that sense very stinky i mean griffin Logue got taken quite early as well early. but i think he's a good player and yeah. i think i think he's a lot further along than someone like a scrimshaw it is yeah. early days i could look like an idiot like in five years but at the moment i'm thinking well either way he's not at gold coast so Bad pick. Right, my last one's Josh Shackey. Now, again, still early days for the Shack 
the big Shactus. So he went with the second pick in the 2015 AFL draft, and he went to Brisbane. And this was a bad time for Brisbane. This is when they were really stinking it up, weren't winning many games. They had a young Eric Hipwood that was their key forward. If they won a game, it was breaking news, basically. 27 games, 25 goals. Isn't a bad return, but he was just a hot fart of a player. Now he plays for the Western Bulldogs. Um, he would probably struggle to make a game there these days, wouldn't he? Yeah. Doesn't do the best 22, does he? Oh, he's a fringe player, I think. Yeah. They're still hoping he comes on, but he hasn't quite hit his straps. For the second pick, smells like poo, mate. Next pick, Clayton Oliver. Absolute Rooster. diesel. Yeah. Absolute diesel? Yeah, that's a good thing, I think. Okay. <laughs> Big Daddy Diesel. <laughs> Fuck. Thank you, Drewsy. That caps off 10 absolutely stinky AFL draft picks over the last 15 or so years. It's been a pleasure to have you back on the channel. Thanks for your extensive research. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for watching True Footy, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you check out my good friend, Drewsy. He's just hit 3K subs. Let's get him to 3,001. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you subscribe, that could help. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.